Hey, it's Dragon Feather, and I'm making a video about how to come in the broom closet or how to practice in the broom closet. Alright, so how to come out of the broom closet. You just found paganism, wicca, witchcraft, whatever, and you want to practice it. You found this new amazing thing, and you want to invest yourself in it, and you want to really embrace this new thing that you found out. But you're under 18. So what are you supposed to do, right? Um, well, I have four steps to follow to tell your guardians or your parents how to come out of the broom closet. Um, step one is to educate yourself. Learn what you believe in and why you believe in it. Because it's easy to say, oh, I don't believe in that because of this. But you hardly ever hear people saying, well, I believe in this because. So, learn what you believe in and why you believe in it. Like, I believe in Wicca because it's a dualistic religion. And there's a god and a goddess. And in Christianity, it's not like that. It's more of a masculine-based religion. Like, there's a god. There's actually the... the whatever. And... The masculine and feminine energies are balanced, and there's no, like, Satan, there's no evil in Wicca. There's evil in the god and the goddess, but there's also wonderful things in the god and wonderful things in the goddess. So, I mean, it's just like humans, like, no one's perfect. Either are the god and the goddess, you know, that's what I believe. That's why no one's perfect, because blah blah blah, I'm not gonna go into that. Um. I'll do that another video. Yay! Videos! Okay. And I don't believe in Christianity because there's contradictions. Um, the, f the one I always use is one of the Ten Commandments, commandments is thou shalt not kill. And there were crusades. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, so yeah, step one is get yourself educated. Step two is ease your parents into your new religion or your new practice like say oh my gosh like nature's amazing i love being in nature mom or i love being in nature whoever dad whatever i love being there i just it's nice it's relaxing it's calm you know instead of being like oh i don't like being in the cities it's too civilized or whatever um or i like meditation mom because it helps me clear my head it lets me clear my mind or, hey dad, you know, visu visualization is really good, you know. I visualize myself getting an A on the test and I get an A or really close to an A on the test. So, yeah. My parents are the kind of parents that are like, get good grades because they know I'm capable of it. So, they're like, do it or you trouble. That kind of sounded Asian. Sorry, that was stereotypical. I'm not racist. I actually love Asians. My boyfriend's an Asian, so... Um, I'm sorry Asians, I love you. Um, I actually really think Asian things are awesome, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, so step two is, ow, sorry, step two, I get distracted sometimes. So step two is ease your parents into it. Step three is pick a day. Um, a day not when they're happy because you don't want to be the mood killer and not a day when they're already down in the dump or when they're like ooh because you don't want to be make them go like oh my gosh I'm so pissed at you and they take all their the negativity or whatever out and you you want to choose a day when it's just like meh or whatever because if they don't really care they're like still meh or good for you so no they're don't approve they're a little upset so yeah, and then step four is um, sit your parents down and talk and just say, look, this is what I believe and why I believe in it, and this and what you believe in, this is why I don't believe in it. And um, some very, very helpful techniques is to try and avoid saying the word you in it. Don't say like, I don't believe in your religion or I don't believe in what you believe in, you know? Try and say like, I don't believe in Christianity. Assuming that your parents are Christian, you could say, 
I don't believe in Islam or I don't believe in whatever because of this reason. And this is why I believe in my reason. In my religion, sorry. Um, yeah, so try and stay a word from the way. S try and stay away from the word you because people usually, when you say you, they put up a defensive like, like, what'd you say about me? What'd you say about me? So try and stay away from the word you. Um, the second thing to keep in mind is try to keep your cool. Um, try not to freak out at them if they don't approve. Try not to be like, well, I'm going to do it this way. You just don't understand me. Because most likely they don't understand. And that's why they're like, no, it's not loud. So, you know, don't yell that and just be like, okay. And if you're forced to go to church, um, then, like, if I was forced to go to church, I would be the kind of person to be like, no, I'm not going. I would fight back. I would make a big deal about it because I haven't gone to church in years and I don't know why my mom would randomly make me go. So I'd be like, why are you doing that? So if you are forced to go to church, um, while you're sitting in the pews, listening to what the, I think they're called priests or whoever, I don't go to church, so I don't know. I'm sorry for anyone who is, and I apologize. For the people who talk, you know, about scriptures, about anything like that, um, those people, while you're sitting in the pews, you can meditate because it's normally quiet and um, it's a ve churches are very peaceful, very spiritual, obviously, atmospheres. And those kind of atmospheres are very helpful to meditate in. And so there you go, meditating. And the only time you'd be interrupted is to sing hymns or hymns or whatever you want to call them. So there's that. Now if you want to practice in the broom closet. All right, kind of run out of time, so I gotta hurry up. Um, so if you're practicing in the broom closet, something that you can do is set up your altar, and there's many things you can say in place of what it actually is. Um, my mom has seen my altar, but she doesn't know it's an altar. Um, I've said, oh, it's what I use for meditation. Like, that's my excuse. Whenever she's walked in on me doing a spell, I'm like, I was meditating and she bought it, so I've just stuck with that, um, and it works, so that's what I do. And, uh, another thing you could say is that, oh, this is my collection of, like, cool things, and, like, if you have an athame, because it is a knife, and most people don't approve of knives, keep it hidden, um, keep it away, but, like, um, if you have been into Harry Potter in the past, say, oh, this is my wand, and I was just kind of being a dweeb and made it, so you can even do that. And um, say that, you know, with your nature and stuff, with your stones, be like, oh yeah, these are my stones that I've collected. Like, ever since I was little, I've had a, I've collected stones. That's why, like, stones are made for me, because they've just been there my entire life. So, yeah. Um, and with your god and goddess statues, like, I don't have actual god and goddess statues. Um, I have a, um, a, it's a deer with um the horn it has antlers and it's a it's a candle holder it's a three candle holder so it's like really good for waking things because like the threefold law and blah 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 um and i actually drew the god symbol on it but my mom doesn't know what that means i'm very lucky my mom is ignorant so that works um and what else staying practicing in the broom closet like if your friends don't approve of it, like, don't talk about it. And if they do approve of it, like, talk about it. Because, you know, you can't talk about it at home and all the cool things you've learned at home. So f try and find someone to talk to about it. Like, I talk to my dad about everything that I learned. And he, I, he actually has a conversation with me. So, I'm pretty much out of time. Uh, if this doesn't help completely, send me questions and I will make another video about it. But, um, until next time, blessed be. And bye-bye.